everyone. Thank you for your presence. Um, I'd like to call the Transportation Committee meeting to order. Please call the meeting. Alderman Moore. Present. Alderman Vaccaro. Alderman Cohn. Present. Alderwoman Howard. Present. Alderman Muhammad. Alderwoman Middlebrook. Present. Alderwoman Davis. Present. You have five present. Thank you. of housekeeping things before we get started. Um, we have uh, had a public hearing on Board Bill 93. We are back uh, in committee to continue the discussion on the bill uh, and uh, make sure that all committee members have opportunity to have their input in a more formal way. And uh, today there is a uh, a time limit on the meeting, it will go a maximum of an hour and a half. We will also not be taking a vote today. And we will also ask for uh, everyone to, if you have some additional thoughts, um, I'd like to have them in writing uh, at the end of this meeting so that the uh, clerk will be able to work with the sponsor of the bill and make sure it's to her acceptance, even though we've talked about it here, to make sure that it's right and it's exactly the way she wants it to be. So, um, and we will try to see if we can get a quorum for another meeting next week. And if not, it'll be that, uh, when do we come back? January. January. Okay. Okay. And if not, it's the first week that we come back. Uh, also, um, for the committee members, I wanted to say this because sometimes when we get to the end, I might forget. Uh, you're also going to have um, an opportunity mm -hmm. to provide the update that's required. Uh, so we'll be doing that uh, as soon as we come back from Christmas the break. from the study? Yes, from okay. the study, from the privatization study. So, uh, and I didn't do it last time because there was so much more information that I thought needed to be disseminated to the public, and so I wanted to wait for that. And so they should have everything ready, and we'll have a, an update done. Oh, right. and, uh, after the first of the year. After the first of the year, and it will be, uh, it will be presented in this committee, and uh, it will also be documents prepared for the public to pass out as well. So, um, Alderwoman Spencer. So would you like to go ahead and get started, please? Sure. Uh, I would like to get started here. Uh, first of all, thank you, Madam Chairwoman and members of the Transportation and Commerce Committee for hearing this bill here today. As you all know, this is uh, the fourth public hearing uh, on Board Bill 93, um, a bill that would require a public vote before we as a city move, move forward with the privatization of St. Louis Lambert International Airport, our city's largest public asset. In order for us to discuss why it is important for the public to vote on such an issue, we must first describe briefly what privatization actually is. In 1996, Congress established the Airport Privatization Pilot Program, details of which can be found in Section 149 of the Federal Aviation Reauthorization Act of 1996. Participation in the program, despite having been in place for over 20 years, has been very very limited, in part because major stakeholders have different, if not contradictory, objectives and interests. In fact, only two U.S. commercial air service airports have completed the privatization process under the Airport Privatization Pilot Program. One of those, Stewart International Airport in New York State, has subsequently reverted back to public ownership. Uh, Luis Munoz Marine International Airport in San Juan, Puerto Rico is now the only airport with a private operator. <clears throat> As of last year, there were three active applicants in the airport privatization pilot program. Hendry County Airglades Airport in Clewiston, Florida, 
I'm sure uh, none of us have heard of that. <coughs> Westchester County Airport and White Plains, New York. And of course, our beloved St. Louis Lambert International Airport here in St. Louis City, or St. Louis, located in St. Louis County. St. Louis Lambert International is one of the most historic airports in the United States. In 1928, St. Louis City voters approved a $2 million bond issue for the purchase of the land uh, for Lambert and for the improvements, the runways, including taxiways, hangars, and support facilities. Because of the early use of tax dollars for the construction of the airport, we are grandfathered in to a revenue sharing program whereby the city enjoys almost $7 million a year in direct revenue from Lambert. We are one of just 12 airports in the country that enjoy such a revenue sharing program out of 457 public airports in the United States. That is less than 3% of airports nationwide that have been grandfathered into a program that allows revenue to drive into the city from the airport's use really quite remarkable and that is a testament to our city's history in aviation and airport construction. So why would we put, it, let, me, let me just say, if we do privatize that, that seven million dollars goes out the window. We are no longer grandfathered into that program. So why in the world would we put that seven million dollars at a year at risk? And what is airport privatization? Privatization refers to the shifting of government functions and responsibilities and sometimes ownership in whole or part to the private sector. Many public airports privatize many aspects of their airports without handing over the full reins to a private entity. For example, service contracts, many U.S. airports, including Lambert, outsource non-core operations to private <coughs> firms that specialize in those functions. Examples include landscaping, bus shuttles, and concessions. Airports may even engage with the expertise of the private sector by contracting specific facilities or responsibilities such as parking, terminal concessions, terminal operations, and refueling. In some cases, a private management company has been awarded a contract to, in, to manage an entire airport for a specified term. This is a form of partial privatization. Uh, AV Ports out of Virginia, for example, has management service contracts with a number of airports in the United States, including Albany International and Westchester County. These are full management contracts, which again are partial privatization. So if what we want to do is engage with the private sector to improve the management and function of our airport, we can do so on a partial basis. Airports are also able to privatize financing, operation, and maintenance services. Terminal 5 at Chicago O'Hare International Airport and Terminal 4 at New York John F. Kennedy International Airports are examples of this. But full privatization is a whole new level. It is described as the sale <coughs> or long-term lease of an airport to a private owner or operator, and there are some very significant differences. Under full privatization, one of the most significant differences is the use and sale or lease of land, of land and the proceeds of which. Under non-privatization or partial privatization, the sale or lease of properties for non-airport purposes are considered <coughs> airport revenue and must be used for airport purposes. But under full privatization, airports can request DOT approval for the sale or lease of properties to con be considered for other purposes and the revenue would go to the private operator. This is a big deal because Lambert has accumulated an absolute ton of un currently unused land. Public operators are eligible for federal grants for major infrastructure improvement and that is specifically why airports are not allowed to, to generate revenue for their cities because we receive Every airport receives an enormous amount of funding from the federal government for major infrastructure improvements. Under full privatization, private operators are eligible for grants, but at a lower federal share. This means we as a region will lose out on federal dollars. <clears throat> Continuing to discuss some of the differences between partial and full privatization, 
rates and charges on airlines under non or partial privatization rates and charges for airlines must be reasonable pursuant to those federal grant assurances and they must follow federal guidelines and federal standards but under full privatization rates may rise without cap with the consent of 60 to 65 percent of airlines in the case of st louis this could be disastrous for the potential for international travel Southwest Airlines is our largest flight provider with almost 50% of flights. If, for example, a private operator wanted to increase charges on international flights to subsidize domestic flights, they could do so at the very significant risk of negatively impacting our international flights. While decreasing flights may be good for some of our airlines, it would not be good for the St. Louis region. In fact, I would argue that a lack of international flight options currently is a major hurdle to the growth of our region. <coughs> Likewise, charges on passengers under non or partial privatization, a private operator is not authorized to impose, collect, or use personal passenger facility charges. But under full privatization, a private operator is authorized to impose collect and use revenue from passenger facility charges that they could choose to impose. This could greatly increase the cost of landing in St. Louis, leaving St. Louis and even passing through St. Louis on a connection more expensive than it currently is to no net benefit of St. Louis. While increasing those fees could maximize profits, it could very well decrease the use of our airport and the traveling to and from St. Louis or even through. As I mentioned earlier, part participation in the airport privatization pilot program has been limited. That's why it's called a pilot program. <laughs> and since its inception, just 12 airports have even applied for it, and only two have completed the process. One has backed out, New York, and the success of the Puerto Rico airport privatization is debatable. And I'd like to mention that that is a whole different beast there in Puerto Rico. That government was a mess, and there were all kinds of other, a host of issues with the airport before privatization was even considered. How will this affect St. Louis? Let's take a look at history. The city of St. Louis was once the fourth largest in the nation. Our city lost its competitive edge in large part <coughs> because we lost our transportation edge. As railroads displaced riverboats as the prime means of transportation, St. Louis leaders at that time bowed to existing business interests and secretly stifled railroad development to protect the riverboat industry. Chicago, on the other hand, aggressively prepared for the changing economy. And we can see where Chicago is today compared to St. Louis. Airports are the railroads of the 21st century. And again, St. Louis is looking at our transportation future. The world economy is increasingly moving by air. The International Air Transport Association projects a doubling of international flights in the next 20 years. Large airports in the nation's midsection, Chicago, Dallas, and Denver, are all currently leading the nation in delays and canceled flights around 30% of all flights fall into those categories. These airports are simply not capable of absorbing the doubling of international flights or the resulting increase in domestic flights that will accompany that growth. There is no doubt that the Midwest will need additional air capacity and the St. Louis region is uniquely positioned to fill that need. We have not one but two international airports, Lambert and Mid-America, just across the river in Illinois, with plenty of room to grow both, and they are practically connected by a direct Metrolink line, which is a very, very unique situation for anybody who's traveled through London or Chicago and has had to change airports, both of which are nightmares to do so in. As we look at our airport's future, we should also be looking at creating a regional transportation development plan, perhaps a regional airport authority to coordinate the growth of, tr of passenger and cargo capacity for the best interest of the St. Louis region's economy. But most importantly, we need to put St. Louis back into mainstream of the international economy. Our regional population and our regional economy have been stagnant for many decades.
for my entire lifetime, since 1970, we are a region of three million people, and if we had just kept up with the, uh, the average population growth during my lifetime, we would be a region of 4.5 million people, and we would have much brighter futures for all of our city's children. We are sitting on an opportunity for the region to strategically reposition itself as a center for international aviation. What we are asking right now is should we privatize our airport, but this is the wrong question to be answered. Rather than the short-term question of can we make a quick buck for our city by selling off this asset or selling off a long-term lease of this asset, we should be asking how can our region's aviation assets be used to maximize the growth of the St. Louis regional economy. So far, the process of even considering privatization has been funded by Rex Singfeld. But this wasn't about a lack of money. When we were asking ourselves if turnstiles would be good for Metrolink stations, we found $3.6 million to conduct that study. Letting Singfeld run and fund this study is about letting special interests ask the questions and then answer them. We have all seen this process has been <coughs> chock full of conflicts of interest. The process that we are smack in the middle of is not a process that we as a city or a region should be proud of. It has lacked accountability and transparency, and most importantly, it has lacked significant public involvement. The current public engagement is heavily funded. There was a door-to-door -door campaign going on designed to hedge off concerns rather than provide real insight into the reasons why we are even considering this option and what St. Louis might gain from it. Not to mention our county residents have been entirely excluded. While the city owns and operates the airport, it serves an entire region. However, giving the taxpayers of the city of St. Louis an opportunity to weigh in by way of a vote will provide a path for more public engagement, more public education, and a public discourse that can do nothing but improve the process. And with that, um, I do, I want to conclude by saying that engaging the public should not be something that this body should stifle. We should be proud to engage our St. Louis City voters. We have done it before and they have been right. When we, when we asked them to vote on the last soccer proposal, they turned it down and now we are looking at a much better and improved soccer proposal. Our voters can be educated and can make good decisions for the best interest of our region. And for that, I ask for a public vote in the event that the city of St. Louis moves forward with the privatization of St. Louis Lambert International Airport. Madam Chairwoman, I would be happy to take questions. I want to express my sincere frustration and disappointment that the committee is not going to vote on this today, considering that this has been a, the fourth hearing. This has been something we have discussed at great length, and uh, I think the public has uh, made clear their desire to have a say in this process, and I fail to understand why we cannot consider this by way of a vote today in committee. That well, being first, said, I, uh, will, uh, I will entertain questions. Okay. Well, let me clear up a couple things first before I go to committee members. I haven't been present at four. Meeting, so I'm, I must have missed three of them. As the chairwoman, you called those meetings. They were transportation and commerce hearings. I do know that I did call some meetings <coughs> that we did not meet because we didn't get a quorum one, one time. Uh, between the bad weather and no quorum, we did not meet. There were, there, this is the fourth hearing, yeah, so am I right? I'm not there gonna, was, there I'm was not, one here in City Hall, there was one on the south side, there was one on the north side, and this is number four. Those were engaging the public, as you have suggested, should be done. And we tried to make sure that we covered those. Now, that public had a lot of questions and concerns. And the first one that I keep hearing over and over from the public is, what am I voting on? Because there's nothing here to tell them what they're voting on. And so we have a lot of work to do. And that's what we're going to do. This we're going to do the work. I agree. So We're this, going to do the work. I want to be very clear. This bill does not put before the voters today, tomorrow, or any time in the discrete future a vote on privatization. What this bill simply does is require a vote in the event we move forward. 
So at that point, we will have something to put before the voters if the city moves forward. This bill does not require a vote today. It does not require a vote of the blind public. It requires a vote if and only if the city makes the decision to move forward with privatization of the airport. It's a very, it's a very simple, uh, and simple bill. And, and what it does is sets up the <coughs> expectation for not just the public, but for investors to understand that in order to move forward, we must move forward in a unified, collective, collaborative manner that involves the public and their consent. We shall move forward. Um, I was just looking at, oh, okay. So here's the, uh, what I'd like for you to do as committee members is for, I need you to really take your time ask all the questions that you need to ask and or make suggestions for clarification um, because that's one of the things I, I was out talking to uh, all of our employees at the airport and that was they said well what are we voting on why would, it doesn't say anything and and this is not the time to be talking about a vote let's find out the answers to if we should privatize if we should just simply take the information that we have and choose to do some things internally with whatever resources that we may have and or just postpone any improvement of the airport for a while. We don't know that until we get the data in front of us. And the employees had some very good questions. They also uh, had some concerns that uh, it was criminal for people to put that bad information out there and have people uh, thinking they were going to lose their jobs next month. It was just wrong. Uh, so uh, we got all that cleared up. Some of them had some great suggestions. Uh, it, it was also interesting that a lot of them didn't realize that all the other people that work at the airport, because we only had about 500 employees, they thought everybody was paid by the city, and we cleared that up for them. They're paid by the private entities that run those various uh, entities there, which is uh, a significant amount of the airport's operation is already privatized. So um, I wanted you to know that part of it too, because that just happened the last two days. Um, so we're going to go by uh, seniority. Um, so Alderman Moore, you were first. So besides the vendors that are paying the salary, who gets paid by the city? It's a select number of employees that are paid by the city. So, so, and then think about it, some of our electricians, but we also have private contracts that provide some of our services on the electrical side and engineering side as well. Uh, we have um, the, some, some of the custodial services, but the majority of it is private. Uh, and I think you all heard the, uh, it was a little misunderstanding, a misunderstanding of uh, the last contract that was going to go out for cleaning because it didn't have uh, enough minority participation. So it was voted, it, it was pulled back at E and A, uh, and that still has to go out. And that particular contract, they're going to have uh, a little over 300 plus employees at the end of the day. Uh, our fuel contract is private. We don't take care of that, somebody else does. That's outsourced to another company. Uh, we don't oversee food on any level. Uh, Host has had that contract with the airport, that's a private contract, for 49 years. Uh, we've got uh, our administrative employees who handle the day-to-day, -day, uh, who work under Rhonda. They're paid by the city and uh, like I said, when you look at the thousands of people that work there, we just have 400 plus. The union members uh, had some concerns too because they wanted to know about the union contracts. Well, those union contracts are only two years long. So um, some of them even said, well, maybe, you know, if they don't want to go union, since they only get two year contracts anyway, and they have to continue to renegotiate and renegotiate that that might be something that they could consider uh, and uh, have uh, something done a different way. 
but um, the business managers are present from the unions with their constant contact. They're uh, answering any questions that their members have. Uh, but there's a lot to talk about. And it's a long way off before you'll even have a hint of which direction we should be going in. Probably closer to a, a year plus from now. So, uh, but we're going to stay in touch. Uh, we agreed to do quarterly meetings with the employees. Uh, so, and if they have any questions, they can send them through the pipeline or email. We'll put them out for the public to see what their questions are and what the answers are to those questions. Uh, you know me, I don't hide from anybody. I gave everybody my cell phone number, so if they needed to, if they didn't want the public to know something, they weren't ready to be, uh, they could call me and I would get the information that they want. Uh, so it, uh, it, I don't know if I answered everything you needed, so did I? You did, I have six more questions to ask. Go right ahead. To the sponsor. You say San Juan, Puerto Rico, and New York. Mm -hmm. San Juan has opted out? New York has opted out. They New went York. They went private, and then it was not a good deal. The private operators backed out. They, they sucked them. They did their, you know, they uh, realized they were not going to make money. They had to throw their hands up and give up. Was well, the means, same people proposing in New York and San, and San Juan? Um, I'd have to look at the private operators. I don't know uh, exactly, but I will say to your earlier question about how many uh, employees we have there, mm -hmm. um, as the chairwoman pointed out, a significant amount of Lambert is already privatized. Right. And we could continue to privatize every employee there without handing over the entire strategic direction of the airport and what we plan to do with it. Um, to a private operator. So while we have privatized much of it, we could continue to privatize more of it without doing this full privatization. So, I mean, I want to just be really clear about that. Well, uh, may I? Sure. One of the things that has never been made clear, and it should be made clear, the reason why we're looking at this opportunity is the investment opportunity to do additional improvements at the airport. Uh, we don't have that kind of money. And in this market of this world, investors are investing in everything to improve cities, infrastructure on all levels. So when you go to the financial market, you'll find that there's investments even in water in some places the improvement of the bridges, you name it, it's being invested in for, and that's something that's looked at. Uh, all other reasons why are minimal. It's really to have the opportunity to improve the airport. And you will still have management over it from administration. You will still have, um, this board will still be in, if anything goes wrong, and we need to pull back. Our contracts will be tight. There's no way. It probably will take a minimum of six months to even develop the contract. That's how complicated it is in order to make sure that, th that we are protected. And let's be clear. If we privatize the airport, we're not going to have control over the administration of it. Uh, there are a lot of private firms that are investing in public infrastructure. Water, for example, is one that the chairwoman mentioned. We saw that in Flint, Michigan recently. That did not go over very well for that public utility. Uh, so when we talk about moving the responsibility of a public asset to the private sector, there are a lot of risks that are associated with it. And this board will have very limited oversight over a private operator if we choose to go that route. Who will prepare the proposal? Will that be Rex and his crew? It is very unclear to me right now. That is a question perhaps the chairwoman could answer. Because he has, as my understanding, prepared every proposal and contract to date regarding this process. Now, that may change because, as we all know, the Trump administration is looking to expand the airport privatization pilot program. And that is something that we need to keep in mind because the Trump administration is clearly interested in seeing cities move forward with this, which in my mind should raise red flags for everyone. Okay. So we don't have a proposal. What are we voting on? 
what we are voting on is if we do get a proposal and we do decide to move forward, giving the public a say. Right now, the public has no idea if they get to vote on whether or not we privatize our airport. And What's what, so hard about getting a proposal? I don't. I, mean, why, I can't why, answer that. Why, why, why we don't have a proposal at hand that we can take back during this Christmas break and talk to our constituents about this is what you're going to be voting on, we, not just privatization. Well, this is a this measure will basically say, look, public, if we're going to move forward on a proposal, you'll get a say. This is safeguarding the public's involvement in that process. It doesn't say, public, we're going to have a proposal for you tomorrow. It doesn't say we're going to have one for you in six months or a year. It says, if we get a proposal, we're going to take it to the voters. That is all this bill says. If we get a proposal, we're going to give it to the voters. And I wonder why we don't have a proposal. What, what's the whole of it? They know we've had four meetings. We're meeting now, look like someone that's interested in proposing, has it been a, an OLP been put out asking for a proposal? Alderman Moore, uh, the reason you don't have a proposal is because you have not analyzed, first of all, you have to analyze the asset, and then you'll have to put a request for qualifications out to see if there's anybody out there who can meet what our expectations will be after we do all of our due diligence, which as I just said, will take a little, probably about a year to do. And after the request for qualifications comes back, depending on the number we have, if we only have one or two, it's an easier process. But if, if we get more than that, uh, we would have to take time to review those as well, and then come up with a request for proposal for someone, for us to look at who would come and uh, take on that task. And so those two parts of the process come after the analysis of our assets. And so we're talking six months to a year after the 18 to 24 month process. This is not anything you can take lightly. That is another reason why you have a working group on behalf of the city of St. Louis that has representation from the comptroller's office, the mayor's office, the Board of Aldermen. That's E and A. Who yeah. else besides? No, no. We have a working group that that sits at the table with the other people who are doing the uh, analysis and gathering of information. So that side of it, they make no decisions. We make the decisions. And so what we're doing is we take, uh, and let me add, the budget director is sitting there as well, and our financial analyst, uh, Gerard. Gerard. He's on the working group, too. So we are sitting there, and we are analyzing everything. They're, they can't even put anything on the website unless we approve it. So all the information comes back to us, and we're working on this information. And we will make, your city will make the decision on whether or not we stop the process, whether or not we do partial, or if we, if we want to look at the whole thing. And I tell you that request for qualifications is going to help you with the answer, even if you can't make that decision before that. Because if nobody is in the position to invest the amount of money that you need, if they don't have the qualifications to manage uh, the operation the way you want it managed, then there's no, there's no reason to go any further. So there's so many points where you can make a decision not to go further. And that's what I say over and over to people. This is not a done deal. Uh, and it's a good process that should happen anyway because we don't know what our asset is worth. We don't know. We are also hiring civil engineers to go in and check the entire operation there. So we know how much money needs to really be invested. You should do it. I mean, I've done, I did it with the public school system uh, and other systems because if you don't know what your asset is worth, then you're, you're blindly going into something that may not have the uh, right amount of money invested. And so then what? You, you failed. What groups besides the ENA and the Board of Aldermen is going to be voting on this? Uh, well, this committee is going to be voting. Well, I consider this the Board of Aldermen. Okay. So ENA. And the full board. And who else? Airlines. And, uh, well, first, the first part of it is the airlines. 
and we're at that point, we're talking to them now, and we'll know if the airlines, if 65% of the participation from the airlines says we're not interested in this, we don't want to be a part of it, they then it's them. over. It's over because what you can't do anything without them. What about if we, the Board of Aldermen, if we vote it down? Is it over if we vote it down? Of course. If we vote, if we vote down uh, what is sent to you as a result, then that will be over. How much more money are we going to gain from privatizing the airport? I hear you keep hearing six or seven million dollars that we're making now. I disclaim all of those numbers that are out there because we don't know that. We don't know what's before we us. We get more money. The, that, that's it. If it's yeah, not yeah. going to benefit us, why would we do it? And I've said that over and over again. I just said it the other day. I don't want it to just uh, like we get about six million on rare occasions, six and a half. But the multiplier that must be on there has to be worth it to the city. And I want to see a qualified entity that irregardless if they don't make any profit for the first five years, 10 years, that doesn't stop our expectations, OK? And so you don't What would do, be your expectation? If it was me, if I, if I had a total say-so, I would want to see at least a 25 to 30 million dollar uh, return, and that's a minimum. But I don't know. I, I don't know that yet because I don't have the analysis in front of me. I don't know the absolute value. Is that a return on an annual basis or overall? Annual basis. I think we need to work on a proposal. Because I'm not going to give up six and six million or seven million, and I'll have a strong multiplier on it. That would make no sense to me. So there's a lot of consideration that must be done uh, moving forward. But you've got to have facts in front of you. Yeah, and the facts would be the proposal. And I think that we need to put out something to figure out how we're going to get a proposal. That's what we're so working we on. Have, how long will this go? It'll take about a year. <laughs> Do you realize how big the airport is and all that it encompasses? You, you must yeah, be but you got all these moving parts and all these working parts. You got all these people uh -huh. that are involved, and we can't get a proposal put out an RFP to ask for a proposal. From no, sir, so it doesn't more. happen like that. And I really like the fact that we have the right people sitting there because our controller must be involved. Her office has to be involved because she knows where all of our debt is. She knows what makes sense because she knows what we have to pay off in the future. She's got her bond people that work for her office every day. They're sitting there with us at the table. So there's, there's just, it's too complicated to just say, oh, well, let's, let's ask somebody to do it. How long have we been working on it? Uh, we're in our, we started, what, in August? We started in August. So it's, what, three months, yeah. Well, I want to make a comment. I, I want to know part of privatization, leasing, somebody else owning, the airport, and if I had to vote today, I would vote present because there's nothing for me to sink my teeth into. That's what I've been talking about. Go back and tell about. my constituents about a proposal. Here's That's a what proposal, I've been talking about. and especially talking about Rex and his crew. I know somebody in there representing Rex. Tell him I said so. And I don't appreciate. He's been getting it. a lot of messages. I've been bad. <laughs> yeah, well, but I, I think we need yeah. to. Try to get a proposal here so we can uh, make this a very this would be a very intelligent board yeah. bill 93. But uh, I want to know what to tell my people. Alderman Moore, with the, all it's unfortunate that there's been so much misinformation about this bill. This bill simply answers the question: If we go private, does the public get to vote? If we vote yes on this bill, the public will get to vote on a proposal when we get it. If we vote no on this bill, the public will not get to vote on a proposal if we get it. Well, so I this bill. Listen to me. I understand I we wish, don't have a proposal. I, but I, I wish that I could come down and represent my people like this all the time, but I get disrespected and ignored because of the way I present myself and because of the way of the things that are going on in my community. But to say that I represent my people, I do, but sometimes they want to be involved mm -hmm. themselves. 
So with that, I would say, again, if, I, if this was a vote today, I would vote president because I don't have nothing to tell them. And they beat me up all the time about going down, making decisions without them. So I would be voting president if there was a vote today. And since there's no vote, I think we need to really work on getting a proposal and speed the process up intelligently and make sure that it's informative. But somebody out there has a proposal, they're just waiting around to see what we're going to do. And I think it's Rex. I don't disagree um, that that is a possibility. This bill simply gives your public the assurance that they will get to participate in the process if it moves forward. A no vote on this bill tells the public, we don't want your participation in this process. We don't care but about what you say. The, the Board of Aldermen will make the decision for you. That is what a no vote on this bill That's will it. a no vote on this bill will make the decision in the hands of the Board of Aldermen and will leave out a public vote. That is what the bill does, is provides for a public vote. That's all it does in the event we privatize. The analysis of information coming from the public is very strong. And when they don't understand, they ask very good questions. And some of them are following it. I mean, I'm, I got to be in the middle of it, but they don't have to be in the middle of it. But they're following it very closely and have very strong opinions. And they send the information in on things that they hear because they're looking at those working group meetings. They're following those. Nobody's hiding behind any closed doors. They're taped. So anytime somebody wants to know what was said, they can see. That's really great to hear, especially hearing that the public is so engaged in this process. Yeah. And that leads me to, again, stand behind the bill itself, which simply gives those engaged city residents the opportunity to not only participate in hearings, but participate in the decision making by way of a vote. This bill sets up one of two things. Either the Board of Aldermen and the city alone decides the fate of the airport or the public is involved. These are the two outcomes that will come out of this bill. Either we decide it alone, the Board of Aldermen and the Mayor and the Comptroller, or we let the public weigh in. That is all this bill does. It's right. very, we, very we simple. we want to work on the bill. We want to work on the bill and strengthen it. Uh, some of our public has said, so... That they don't want to vote on it? Oh, no, no, no. Some, 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 I, I, a lot of people don't care, number one. The second part is that when do they vote? When is the appropriate time to vote? Do they vote before we get a proposal? And one guy said, well, if we vote, we don't want to do anything. We don't want an airport to be improved. Then nobody's going to bid on it. I saw, and I suggested to them that it, that depends on, that, or on, on who bids. Some people will take that risk. But the due diligence that's required to put in a request for qualifications, they have to spend about a million dollars. So if that company is strong enough and they want to throw away a million dollars, so be it. And I told them, don't let that limit their thought process. Another one says, so if we vote after you do the request for qualifications and we say we don't want it, now we've killed the opportunity for the city to have uh, improvement at the airport. Again, not necessarily so, but it's a high likely. Now, again, you got to look at if there's a provider out there that'll take a risk, that's fine. That's on them. But we can't promise them anything. Well, this bill simply sets up the process of whether or not the public will have a vote. It is unfortunate that we keep conflating it with the proposal itself or whether or not we privatize. The bill simply sets up whether or not the public will have a say in the process. It's very, very simple. And it should be a no-brainer. Does the public vote if we privatize, or does the public get a say only by way of their alderman and mayor? Those are the two, this is what we're weighing, and it's really unfortunate to be confusing the issue with all these other things. Well, it's not confusing, it's just simply questions that people ask. That's not making anything confusing. 
Well, you, we're confusing the issue of this bill with the actual action of privatizing the airport. These, this bill is a tiny part of that. It just sets the stage on whether or not the public gets a vote on the bill, on, on the privatization of the airport. But we can confuse a lot it of all them day say, long. It makes it a lot easier to Didn't I let you all to go down there and do my work? Go to work. So, but uh, uh, a lot of people want to have a job and not have responsibility to the work that needs to be done and puts it back on the public. Madam Alderman Chair, Moore, lady, I continue. have 12 more questions, but you guys are going on and on. Alderman Moore, you need to continue. So I'm going to turn it over. And I'm sure there are better questions than mine. So I'm sure Carol is ready. Okay. So that's all I have for right now. But I will be coming I know back. Shane's next, yeah. Where'd he go? Shane. Shane was next, but he'll, we'll get him when he comes back in. So Alderwoman Howard. I just, um, and this is just a. Mm -hmm. St. Louis Lambert International Airport. In your bill, you call it Lambert. It's been changed. The name's been changed to St. Louis Lambert International Airport. I just thought uh, we should change that. Sure. Yes, yeah. we should do that. Can we make a change to that? Um, Thank you. Oh, you want the Lambert to go by the international? It's, they they it's changed, changed the name. The name. It's St. Louis it's Lambert. St. Louis Lambert. Than Lambert Internet. St. Lambert St. Louis. Oopsie. Just done a few months ago. <laughs> that was cute. Just a whoopsie. Uh, that's cute. Um, you know, I've, I put out a survey and people do want to vote on this. I just, I guess what my question, I think we need to put a, a timing or some sort of, um, and then you talked about all kinds of configurations, you know, partial, uh, full, um, various configurations. and. I mean, I just, it's very confusing at this point, and, and again, I don't think we have, I, I would like to have more information well, um, from it, the study. Sure, it can be confusing, but we have already engaged in partial privatization. That's how we've well, I mean, it's So if we continue along that path, that is nothing really, I mean, that can happen with mm -hmm. or without, you know, under the current guidelines. What we're talking about, again, is the use of the airport privatization pilot program which requires you know the full privatization of the airport that is what the pilot program um, is designed to do so if we move forward with that i think um, as far as timing goes you know that would really be up to the proposal the bill just simply says that before we move forward there would be you know the public would weigh in on the decision making and it's it's unreasonable for us to try and guess what that timeline would be at this point given the chairwoman's information to us about the you know long timeline etc this all this really does is says there has to be a vote it doesn't specify oh, when it yeah. was when it has to happen and that sort of thing but it gives the public assurance that we will involve them in the process and they will have a say in the process all it really does if we say no we say public you won't get to weigh on this we okay. will do your job for you as the chairwoman pointed out there's a lot there are members of the public that don't care they elect us they want us to do their and to do that job and there are people who say that if but, my taxes will go down go my if my pr property taxes will be lowered do whatever you want with them. Well, and I, I mean, and, you know, if that's part of the pro, if that's part of the proposal, but no, but I'm saying, yeah, that sure, that's the only thing they're concerned about. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying what was kind of took me back. Yeah, but, but I think I guess the other question I have is, do we know? Do you know? And maybe the chair knows this. What percentage of employees at the airport actually are under the city's control? Just that small portion that we talked about. Do we have an idea? Uh, I mean, they I, they have to the whole number. Yeah, right? airport employees must live in the city. The ones that work for us. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. That and four, they get that paid extra to go out there. I guess I'm saying the right 400 plus, because the numbers dropped significantly um, recently. Yeah. They've got a lot of openings right now. So we have about 400, and do we know total amount number of employees that work? Or at or near the airport. I can get those numbers for you. We haven't really got I that far. Well, I was just wondering yeah. the percentage now yeah. that are under private employment, oh, you know, or contract there. employment. <laughs> Would you I know? I see you over there, sir. Uh, I represent about 60. 60? Yeah. 
and the, the numbers uh, up the is about four or five hundred. Yeah, about somewhere between that four and five hundred, yeah. closer to the. Uh, and the airfield maintenance. Yeah, okay. yeah. The airfield so, maintenance. do we know yeah. how many employees are, are total at the airport? Do you have any idea? At the city is about. No, I mean uh, uh, overall. Oh no, because there's like the food. Right. There's so many. There's a lot of vendors. Now I tell you, you what, say they just put a new sign up. Four thousand or so. Yeah. And I was going to ask Rhonda about that. I saw it when I was leaving yesterday. There's a, a sign up that says it takes a village to run this place, uh -huh. and it says seven thousand. Now I, I cannot imagine seven thousand people working out there. Well, and so I was going to ask her about that so number, forth, yeah. or was she talking about the seven thousand that work for the city as a whole? Oh. Because uh, that, that could be misleading. Yeah. And I was going to ask her about that sign. They just put it up. Okay. Yeah. Right. Probably includes airport and concession employees. I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, I would say there's probably at least 4,000 out there. Airline. I mean, airline, airline you know, airline, airline the whole. Oh, that's right. The federal yeah. people out there, too. Yeah. yeah. TSA, yeah. security. Oh, there you are. Oh. <laughs> how many, do you know how many employees are at the airport approximately? My understanding oh, is around 5,000, like but that's yeah. total. Say that again. That's, that's not what she said. What percentage of those are actually employed? 530 mm -hmm. city employees. I don't employees, know, but I don't know how many. I don't it's it's, it's only that number we just said. It's 500, a small number. 530 budgeted, 50 vacancies. Right. right. Yeah. I knew we had a number of vacancies. Yeah. yeah. So about 10%. 10%. About 10%. 10% okay. of city employees. That we monitor mm -hmm. per yeah. Okay. That are direct employees. Direct, direct employees. Yeah. That's a good way to say that. Yeah. I need you at the table, if yes, you don't mind, sir. Here, here. Right there. <laughs> um, go on ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, he can introduce himself. Gerard Hollins, financial analyst for the Board of Aldermen. Nice suit. Nice Thank suit. Thank you, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I think that's, <laughs> that's all I have is that, you know, timing. And, and I understand what you're saying, but I just, it's like, okay. that's all. Gerard, I wanted to ask a question that I could. Um, so the privatization of the, the allowance of 10 airports to work in their pri pro uh, program, it is no longer a pilot program and is now open to any. Yes, um, ma'am. Okay. To so any airport. Any airport anywhere. can do it. Right. So that's. And within a week or so of that being passed, I think we had like 12 airports sign up. Yeah, several airports are looking at it. Yeah. Okay. Have, have any of them fully applied? No. And is, no, the no. Name, is the name of the program still, what is the name of the program now? I don't, I know they took pilot out of the they program. They did take pilot out. I just don't know the, the official name, but they did yeah. take pilot yeah. out of the name. And as we know, as was stated earlier, this is a priority for the Trump administration to move forward with the privatization of airports across the country. And, and we see that now is taking fruition. So again, this is just another piece of the puzzle that we need to keep in mind as we consider this moving forward. Okay. Did you have anything else? No, I just think we probably need to put it before the people at some point. Okay. We're good. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't really have any questions in particular. Um, I'm a co-sponsor of the bill. I do support it. Um, you know, I, I think we can probably clean up a little bit of the language around the, you know, the ballot language and also um, the timing of an election. You know, uh, I think being a little bit more specific with regard to when an election would take place, whether that's a special election or whether that's, you know, the following election is there can be long gaps in between particular elections. Um, so I think we, you know, right now we have one coming up in March and April, but then after that, I don't think the next one is until the following August. Um, so that's a year and a half that, you know, so I just think that, yeah. you know, providing some that more specific right language. Right but, I, I, but I think, you know, in here, it just, it, it's, fairly vague in terms of the you know setting of the election. It just says that the Board of Elections will notify us upon, you know, uh, or send notice of such election. So, you know, I, I mean, I think we have probably cleaned that up just a little bit, but otherwise I'm very supportive of this. I don't think that this really has um, any impact on the privatization process, aside from potentially the timing of an election. 
So, you know, I think cleaning that up a little bit would be helpful. Um, you know, otherwise, uh, this is simply just getting the people's perspective. You know, it's not, it's not binding in any manner. It's not a charter amendment. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, an ordinance can supersede another ordinance. Um, but at the end of the day, this is just getting the, the perspective of our, yeah, yeah, the temperature of our voters. So, yeah. um, it, it, I'm happy to, you know, address those, you know, offline or in a future meeting. Um, you know, in terms of um, amending this with regard to the ballot language and the timing of elections. I'm happy to uh, entertain amendments. I think uh, leaving the timing <coughs> off was a, uh, a deference to the potential proposal, recognizing that there are big gaps. Um, at the time, I was think we were thinking that, uh, you know, this might be an expense, but now realizing that the um, that the consultants are getting paid close to a million dollars a year, a little measly quarter million dollars for a special election really shouldn't cut into the overall budget of the process. So I, I'm not too concerned about the cost of a special election as, it, as the overall cost of moving forward, if that were to be the case. But that is something that I think could be up to the, um, the, the folks moving the proposal forward. Because at the end of the day, as the chairwoman pointed out, it is, um, it is, uh, their money being spent currently before we re are find ourselves in the position to reimburse them through a privatization contract. So other than that, I mean, uh, I, I don't have any other comments in particular about the, the bill before us at this time. Okay. Uh, Alderwoman Middlebrook. Um, being I'm with the lower seniority, it's a gift and a curse, because usually most of my questions are asked and answered or concerned. <laughs> <laughs> so at this time, I do not have any questions. Okay, all right. And um, so we have two important people at the table. Um, I think we have 10. Gerard. Gerard. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So Gerard is, is very involved. He's involved in the financial side of gathering information, analyzing the information, and uh, most especially oh, yeah. making sure that the president of the board uh, is uh, updated on a regular basis, working very closely with the comptroller's office and the budget director, uh, because it's a lot of work that is required on this. And, and for communication part of it, which is how I got overly angry and involved in this, is because we were all ignored in this process. It started off wrong. As I shared with the employees, I apologize because we should have given somebody, given most especially the employees, notice that this process was going to take place. They shouldn't have had to hear all these different mm -hmm. things out here in the public. That's wrong. You should never do that to employees. You should never have people that you expect to come to work every day, do a good job, have that kind of ace about what's going on. You just shouldn't do it. And they should not have left us out of the Oh. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that was, was a fight. A major. That was a fight. Yeah. So um, it was just wrong. So one of the other things that we're doing with the communication process is uh, we're, going, we're going to go overboard with the public. Uh, the public will be engaged on so many levels, on a frequent level. Information is going to be available to them. On a, any move we make, any document that they want to look at, it's there for them to look at it as well. Um, we're, we're, we're just starting uh, with the communication plan. Uh, and we're going to have the opportunity for community engagement to happen in so many different ways. So we will talk to everybody, not just the, re the residents of the city of St. Louis, but we'll talk regionally, we'll talk with the business sector, we'll talk with the county, uh, we'll do, aside from knocking on doors, do phone surveys, I mean, it's just going to be, and at some point, we'll just have things that uh, will be tweeted out. You name it, the communication is going to happen. We're also going to hire a full-time person 
to help with that process because I don't know about anybody else, but I need somebody that reports to us and helps this information move fast. We're not going to pay them a million dollars, are we? No, I guarantee you that won't happen either. But the million dollars, you have to understand, the people that are involved in this process, that's a bargain. The million dollars is a bargain uh, when you look at it. I've been through processes like this before, and it's expensive to hire professionals in the financial industry to do this type of work. It's expensive. Even when you just do the engineering part of that, that's going to be more than that. To actually go out and analyze the airport for its value, that's going to be more than that. When I did, when we did the uh, neighborhood plan for my ward, my little bitty ward, we spent a million and a half. And that required meetings every two weeks with all stakeholders. You got to feed people when you ask them to come to a three-hour meeting in the evening. The, some of my consultants had to fly in. A lot of them, of them lived here in the region somewhere. But it's expensive. So I would rather do it the right way than have somebody send them guess it. So, so that part of it, we got to continue to explain that to the public as well. So hopefully we'll have an additional communication person on board uh, in the next 30 days um, so that we can make sure all of that is covered. Every professional organization, every neighborhood organization who wants, we're going to make sure we're engaging the public. Uh, and uh, if they want to come to working group meetings, those are public as well. Because we do have some people retired or whatever. They can come to those meetings. So that's available as well. Is there anything else that you needed to say? I'm going back. Alderman Moore? You said you are going to make sure that the public is engaged. Who will we be talking to them about voting on an issue as well as the process? We, we need to talk to them about it, yes. Mm -hmm. The ones I've talked to so far are not interested. Uh, hmm. I have one guy who said, hmm. you don't want to do your job? Do I have to do it for you? I was like, ooh. I didn't say I didn't want to do my job. That's not what I said. I'm asking you, do you want to vote? Mm -hmm. And he said, how can I do that? Because I don't have time to look at all of this. Mm -hmm. That's what you're supposed to do. So you're supposed to be involved. So we as all of us supposed to keep them informed. Who's going to get that information out to the public? That's what we're, we're talking about. We will have a full-time communication person uh, that helps us with the plan. We have a communication group on the uh, professional side, but that's okay. But we want to do it our way as well. We want to make sure that if you've got a certain group that we missed, we got to get on that. But you know that better than anybody else. You sure know it better than that professional group. You know who needs to uh, be talked to. You know, you know what when your meetings are. You know they how don't you want to hear present it. it. They don't want to hear it. They do not want to hear it. You go downtown and you skip us and go to the airport. So we're not getting any benefit out of this deal. So they, but they, we don't know that, and that's this. what we need to talk about. I know this. this is what's been going on all my life. Mm -hmm. We've been getting skipped over. So mm -hmm. they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear nothing about no voting on no airport when we about trying to get airport away or the way they, that's the way it's been perceived that we're giving the airport away and you skip over us and go downtown to the ballpark village in the arts so buy a humbug i'm archie bunker yeah <laughs> i want to i want to share that sentiment i'm disappointed to hear that the city is hiring and spending money on a consultant um, to drive this conversation I'm disappointed that our SLDC I, the, the is... The Board of Aldermen requested that. I requested it. Nobody from the professional side requested it because we are going to do this the right way. And we are going to get to everybody that could possibly want a question answered directly. When the city is spending precious resources, hiring consultants, and using its economic development corporation to spend its time focused on finding a way for a private entity to make a profit off of our public... Pro public airport asset that and we can't even pick up the trash that is grossly dysfunctional and disappointing for a city to spend its resources doing and that's and what I'm this city has set in limbo for over 20 years it has not prospered and that is a critical thing that needs to happen 
That's why we don't have any money in our coffers. Because we have not been in the position and the side of creating economic opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. It must be done. It must be done on a higher level. We cannot continue to operate the way we do. Absolutely. That's true. We, can, we lose residents because we fail as a city to provide basic city functions and a basic level of public safety that should be expected by every resident. In if the you city don't want to do Hall. anything and you want the coffers to stay where they are, if you want people to continue to leave the city and you just have bloated rhetoric all the time, then so be it. We'll eventually have to turn the lights off and shut the city down. But instead we're focusing on finding a way to privatize the city's our airport. Future. It's not going to be dependent on our airport. That's, I agree with Alderman Moore. Remind. And to focus on that is short-sighted and really is a slap in the face to residents who expect their garbage to get collected on a regular basis. Do anybody else have any other input? Anything else? Anything else? Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to check everybody's uh, calendar. I want to try to do a meeting next week. If we can't do it next week, we definitely got to do it the first week we come back. We also will do the update report from uh, what is actually all the things that have taken place uh, with the analysis process uh, to date. I will share with you at the moment, we're six weeks behind on um, the schedule window. already. So yeah, so the idea that when we talk about 18 to 24 so months, much it's going to be more than yeah, that. Because just, it's just too much to do. And getting all these folks coordinated, <laughs> Uh, that's why you're already behind by six weeks. So uh, we shall see. The sponsor of the bill will be out of town on Thursday and Friday next week. So how do we Is come okay back? For you? Okay, so I'll, I'll send something Are out. Are you taking a vote? Uh, no, no, not today, sir. I'm talking about for us, for the meeting. For the next meeting? Yes. That's if you all got all your ducks in order, maybe. Well, I don't want to do it till we come back. All right, so, sir. That's just one one vote. Okay. okay. What about you, Shannon? Okay. So we'll I'll put out a memo so all of us are on the same page. And uh, Thursday. Yeah. And that'll give you a few more days too to see if anything else comes up, and make sure that you're available. Okay. One in more January. comment. Yes. Lou, will you teach me how to flip that ink pen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate your uh, attendance today, and I look forward to the next meeting. Sure. Thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay.